momentarily, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay, perfect. Do, 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 setting a couple things up. All right, perfect. So you should all be able to see my screen at this point, and hopefully you can hear me well. If for whatever reason you're not able to see it or you're not able to hear me uh, clearly, just let me know. Go ahead and drop that into the chat. I will be keeping an eye on that during the presentation. But let's go ahead and make this full screen <clears throat> and we'll dive in here. So a couple of things I like to mention before I actually start the session. Number one, this is being recorded and it will be emailed to you right after the meeting ends. So you can watch it again or you can actually share that link with your colleagues if you think this would be helpful for them. Right now, I do have everybody on mute, and at the very end of the session, if we do have any questions, I will be able to take you off mute, and I can actually answer those for you. Alternatively, um, if you have questions that come up during the actual presentation, like I mentioned, I'm always keeping an eye on the chat on the right-hand side of my screen, so please drop those questions in there, and as I see them come up, I will happily pause and answer those for you actually just during the webinar, so we don't have to wait until the very end to answer all of them. So today's webinar topic is how attorneys prioritize tasks and manage projects, specifically with priority matrix for Office 365. So a little bit of a disclaimer, I'm obviously not an attorney, I'm not an expert on what attorneys do, so Throughout the presentation of this webinar, you know, I'm definitely not trying to say I know everything about a day to day of an attorney because I most definitely don't. And what I am trying to say is uh, over the last couple of months, I've seen a really big influx of attorneys and law firms actually using Priority Matrix. And with that, I've been able to connect with a lot of them one on one to learn a little bit more about how they're actually using Priority Matrix to manage their day to day. So throughout all those meetings, I've been taking notes and learning more and more piece by piece from everybody that talks to me that's an attorney using PM. And I put together a presentation for other attorneys to just kind of understand um, how people in similar roles to them are, are in fact succeeding with priority matrix. So I've done my best to deliver this in a way that makes sense and is kind of clear cut for everybody and hopefully put some um, pieces in place to actually help you get started with Priority Matrix. <clears throat> so what I've learned is that top priorities as an attorney are pretty similar from person to person that I'm talking to. Number one, every single attorney says they need a strong communication line with their clients. This is often happening through emails, and I'm gonna circle back to this topic in just a couple of minutes. The second top priority that I typically gather from, from attorneys are time management. Their schedules are so packed from when they get into the office, often 6, 7 a.m., and a lot of the times are the last to leave the office. They're so swamped with work, very busy, hardworking people, so time management is definitely, definitely important for them. When they get a little bit of blank space on their calendar, Priority Matrix can help them understand where they can spend the extra 10 to 15 minutes to really get the most out of their day. <clears throat> Lastly, for those attorneys that are able to work with an assistant, having a simple way to delegate and receive status updates is definitely a top priority for these attorneys. So what is the priority matrix approach? And basically why is priority matrix able to help attorneys and their day-to-day -day projects and tasks? Priority matrix helps attorneys have a visual understanding of their top priorities. And with the Office 365 integrations, they're able to see everything in just one central place. Priority Matrix also provides a system for seamless collaboration if you are, in fact, working with an assistant. And lastly, Priority Matrix allows for smooth email management to ensure stronger client relationships. 
So how do you actually get started with Priority Matrix? The first thing you're going to want to do is install Priority Matrix for your Office 365 applications. This includes Microsoft Teams and Outlook 365. If you haven't already, I always suggest watching the Introduction to Priority Matrix webinar. I host these weekly and we also have recorded sessions on our YouTube channel and the intro and the advanced intro help you understand the fundamentals of using Priority Matrix. Kind of the thought process behind it, how you can actually get started, walking you through the basic features and use cases. It's definitely, definitely important to watch this introductory session if you're brand new to PM, because without it, it may be a little bit challenging to get started. Another step for effectively getting started with PM is to attend live webinars like we're doing today and be sure to save your questions at the end so I can answer them for you kind of on demand instead of having to send us a follow-up email with all those questions. <clears throat> so what are we gonna be looking at during the Priority Matrix Live demo, which is actually just gonna be following the slide. I'm gonna show you how you can manage your priorities with the four quadrant method and how I'm seeing attorneys doing that successfully right now. We're gonna look at email management via Outlook 65 to in fact improve your communication with your clients. I'm going to show you how Priority Matrix will basically tell you what to work on when your schedule has that flexibility. And lastly, for those of you that do work with an assistant, I'm going to sprinkle in a couple um, tips on using PM with another person. During the duration of this entire webinar, we're really going to be taking a close look at all best practices that, in fact, I've seen attorneys using to be successfully using Priority Matrix. So at this time, I'm going to transition into kind of the live web or the live demo portion of this webinar. <clears throat> this is a really great time to drop any questions into the chat box that you might have right now. I'd be happy to take a couple moments to answer those for you all. I'm going to take a sip of water and then I'll get into the live demo portion of the webinar. <clears throat> Perfect. So what we're looking at here, this is my priority matrix and it, it is integrated 100% into my Microsoft Teams application. So for those of you that are just seeing priority matrix for the first time and maybe you haven't had the chance to actually attend the intro session yet, to install priority matrix, you're just gonna go to apps in the bottom left corner. You're gonna, oops. You're going to uh, search for a priority matrix and then, <clears throat> excuse me, once you get the app installed, you can actually just pin it open. So now you're gonna be able to access the full priority matrix application without even having to leave Microsoft Teams, which is really helpful, um, especially for those people that have a slam packed calendar and just don't really have time to toggle through different platforms. Kind of the basic foundation of Priority Matrix is to allow you to create projects, <clears throat> excuse me, which can be kept for your own personal project and, ta and task management, or you will be able to share these projects with your assistant and with your colleagues if that would be helpful for you. I'm going to open up this project here, which is called Client One. You'll notice the way that I have these projects set up first and foremost is broken down based off of different clients. So the reason I have it set up this way is again, simply because this is how I've seen other attorneys setting up their projects and it seems to be a really good setup for them. So as an attorney getting started with Priority Matrix, I would say set up just two or three projects representing maybe the major clients that you're working with right now. <clears throat> when I open up this project, this now represents all of the tasks and all of the priorities that I would need to get done for this client being their attorney. A couple things I like to point out, just one of the uh, kind of first tips for best practices is keeping in mind that you can always rename these quadrants. So this will be taking place here on the right hand side of my screen. 
where you can actually just highlight the name and retype it in. Now, I've seen attorneys using the quadrant titles in many different ways, but this is a common setup that I see kind of surfacing time and time again, which is grouping your urgent tasks together and then also giving you a space to kind of map out your next steps. Attorneys are also constantly using different documentation files emailed back and forth between their clients. So this is a great place to keep all of your important files for one client. And then lastly, as a place to integrate all of the emails from the specific client that you definitely need to keep track of. This is just an example, you know, by no means you have to do it this way, but um, this might be a helpful way just to kind of help you get started using PM. Now I'm going to open up one of these tasks here to talk a little bit more about how you can set up all of your different priorities. <clears throat> so number one, you just double click in here and then you type your task name. And then this represents something that in theory you need to get done or keep track of for this client that you're working with. You can then go in here and you can set your deadline. These due dates are going to uh, appear a couple different places, but this is going to be how Priority Matrix will help you understand what you need to get done on a day-to-day -day basis. You are able to write out all of your item notes, again, just kind of on a personal level to, keep, to um, help you keep track of things you need to get done regarding this priority. And you can also upload files. So this is going to be a safe space to upload files. We are not able to access them and Priority Matrix does hold ourselves accountable to a very high level of security. So you should feel safe uploading any um, you know, privacy documents and anything you need to keep track of, you can upload right here. <clears throat> One kind of, um, well, I guess the second best practice that I, excuse me for a moment. Sorry about that. I'm just working through a little cold here and I um, keep coughing. So I figured I would just <laughs> put myself on mute while I do that um, and spare you guys from hearing that. Just a little heads up, if I do go on mute, it's simply just because I'm getting a, a little sip of water or I'm coughing. Um, so I'm not, not leaving you hanging, just <laughs> muting myself for a quick second there. Okay. So I was going to say another best practice that I want to share with you all as an attorney using Priority Matrix, what I've seen to be really helpful is using what we call item tags. So here in the middle of my screen, or rather on the right hand side where my mouse is hovering over, I have the tag document added. The reason I did this is because this priority is in reference to forms, in other words, an important document for this client. I've also done the same thing for this priority, and I've done the same thing for priorities that are related to documents for other clients as well. So you might be asking, why am I doing that? The reason is because there's a view, which I'm gonna show you in just a moment. Actually, I'll just jump to it right now, which is called the search view. So put yourself in the shoes of an attorney working with multiple clients. And let's say it's Friday morning and you're like, okay, well, what are the outstanding documents that I need to process for all of the clients that I'm working with? The search view is gonna show you everything across all of your priority matrix projects. But what you can do is you can in fact filter by tag. So now I'm gonna go to the bottom right of my screen. I'm gonna type in document. And now I'm only seeing priorities that have that item tag document on it. Again, just to kind of zero in, focus on what I need to see. And now I can see important documents across all of the clients I'm working with. Hopefully that kind of resonates with you. I've seen that be incredibly helpful for attorneys using PM. And something to keep in mind is you're not limited to just one tag per action item. You can add as many tags as you need in order to help you kind of feel like you're staying organized and keeping track of everything super easily. <clears throat> kind of going with the idea of having a view that shows you a wide context of different things in your priority matrix. 
So just to kind of center us again, this is back to my project view. And then I'm going to click on the home view in the top left corner. From the home, I'm going to jump to my agenda. So circling back to that theme of, of course, an attorney has a jam packed day. They often don't have any extra time to even have a chance to look at what they need to work on. But when they use agenda by priority matrix, this is going to show them again across all of their different client projects and it shows you on a daily basis. So here's yesterday, here's today, here's tomorrow. Again, a breakdown of seven days straight and it will show them what they specifically have due for today. So let's say I'm attorney, I have an extra 30 minutes at the end of my day today being Thursday and I'm like, okay, well, what do I still need to get done for today? And maybe what do I have on my plate for tomorrow? You don't have to jump from emails to meeting notes to, you know, client notes. You have all of your priorities right here. So you know exactly what you need to get done by the end of the day. So lastly, but in my opinion, most importantly, especially working as an attorney using priority matrix, I want to touch on the aspect of email management. So an attorney a couple of weeks ago actually showed me their inbox and they were like, Erica, look at all this craziness that I have. I have so many emails coming in from all of my clients and honestly, it's hard to keep track of them since, you know, emails that you receive and you're like, hey, I need to re reply to this right now. Let's just do it. Those emails are not the hard ones that, that ch are challenging to keep track of. The challenging emails are those that maybe need um, uh, collaboration with somebody else, or maybe you need to follow up in a couple of days. Something is pending. The ones that don't require your attention immediately are the ones that slip through the cracks. So when you use the priority matrix and Outlook integration, you can now grab an email and you can actually prioritize it into your priority matrix project. So here's the new client request. Let's say it's relevant to client one, put it into our emails quadrant, pick our due date, and then we hit create action item. It's gonna give you a little preview of the task that you just created. Maybe we need to go in here and we'd like to set a reminder for ourselves for tomorrow, let's say um, 1 p.m. tomorrow. Let's see, do, do, do. okay, we have our due date set. We're gonna just do it once and we're good to go. So now we have a reminder in place as well. When I go back to my priority matrix, I'll show you all what this email looks like since we have now integrated it. Here it is, we have a reminder and we have a due date and in the notes you can see the whole body of this email. So again, if I were to jump back to my agenda view here and I was like, okay, well, what's everything that I have on my plate for tomorrow and for today? It's going to update for us. And here's a great example because it does include a bunch of emails that I know I'm going to need to circle back to tomorrow, ranging across all the clients that I'm working with. So just a little recap of what we've looked at so far. There is one more thing that I want to show you guys and then we'll open up the floor for questions. So far, we've looked at the ability to create priorities, add tags, how you can actually search for those tags, what you can work on when you have a little bit of blank space on your calendar and how you can easily manage your emails. Hopefully that's all been helpful up to this point, but I definitely do want to touch on the concept of using priority matrix with an assistant. I've seen a lot of attorneys bringing on assistants over the last couple of months, and oftentimes their question is, well, how do I involve them in priority matrix as well? The answer to that is going to be, first and foremost, you'll want to share these projects with your assistant by simply adding them as a project member. Once you've added your assistant as a project member, he or she will then be able to access this project entirely and have visibility in here. Let's say there's a new file we need to process, and this is gonna be something that your assistant is going to handle for you. 
add that priority. And then on the right hand side, what you're going to want to do is actually delegate this to them. And then we can say, hey, Bella, can you handle this task for me by Monday? Send that comment. We'll say this is going to be due Monday at 5 p.m. So Monday end of day. We have our due date set now, and then we'll just add a little checklist of things that, or maybe steps she needs to take to correctly process this um, file. So now I can see, see notes for more info on processing this file. <clears throat> All right, so what happens now? Bella has now been notified in her priority matrix that I've delegated this task to her. And on the flip side, maybe she has a couple questions. She's got it done. She provides a status update for me. All of those updates from my assistant will in fact be coming into this alert section for me where I can then click through and make sure we're on the same page. So all of the alerts and updates and notifications will just be coming right through this little alert section. Again, keeping everything kind of centralized and easy for you to view directly through PM running through your team's application. OK, wow, so that was a lot of information that I just shared with you all. I hope that that made it, hopefully at least a little bit of sense. Again, the way that I came to kind of put this presentation together was by continuously getting feedback from attorneys that are successfully using priority matrix right now. So essentially I wanted to take all of that good information, put it together in a presentation and share with other attorneys who may be looking for a project and task management solution. So what are the key learnings here? Priority matrix will help you manage your priorities easily and work on what matters the most by clearly showing you all of your priorities in one place. We're gonna help you have proactive email management to improve your customer relationships. When you can see your emails, priorities, and meetings all in one place, it's gonna make for improved time management and task delegation is easy and those pro progress updates that are incredibly necessary will just be shared with you in one central place. So lastly, the next steps, um, I would definitely suggest register for my upcoming webinars. Next week, I'm hosting another intro and also an advanced intro as well. Be sure to install PM for your office applications. And lastly, just start testing priority matrix with your day-to-day -day tasks. I don't want you to feel like you have to get every single thing in priority matrix right away. We'll definitely get there, but just add a couple projects and a couple priorities and emails just to kind of start getting a feel for how priority matrix works. Sarah, I see your question. Thank you so much for asking. So it, you said, would it be possible to get a copy of the recording? Absolutely. I'm going to send everybody a follow-up email right when this session ends. And it will have a copy of the recording and it will also have a link to my upcoming webinars. <clears throat> Thank you for attending, Sarah. I hope that this was helpful for you. I see another Liberty. I can see you typing. So we'll give you just a moment to ask those questions. I always look forward to seeing your questions because it really helps me kind of tailor my um, next webinars to the needs of the audience. So thanks for asking and sharing the feedback. I'll give you guys just another couple moments here to get your questions shared in the chat box. Perfect. Liberty, she said, would you please check if we are set up for priority matrix or do we have to buy it separately? Oops, sorry, I guess your name is Ravi, not Liberty. I guess it's Liberty Law Office. My apologies, but yes, Ravi, I will check on that for you. Um, instead of sharing the information on this webinar, I will follow up with you one-on-one -on -one to let you know the status of um, your license and kind of the next steps to help you get access to the system. Cherokee, I see you're typing. I'll give you a couple moments here to get your question up. Again, really appreciate you all being here today and sharing your questions and thoughts and feedback with me, super helpful.
Okay, well, it looks like that wraps up the Q&A portion for today. I can't thank you all enough for being here.